Thank you, Ron. That was wonderful. Our opening song for this morning is um, 38 in your binders, One Bread, One Body. stream, the internet does not seem to be working this morning, so uh, your complaints can be directed to Access Montana. <laughs> uh, a few announcements for this week. Uh, first off, uh, many thanks to those who joined us at our table uh, last night for the FLBC fundraiser. Kathy was there, uh, Ruth and John, and uh, who else? 
Chris, yes. Uh, and Jan. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, my wife and me. <laughs> and, and the Drollmans. And, and uh, Rand and Sandy Drollman joined us at our table last night, too. So, um, And so we uh, supported the camp and had a good fundraiser there and a meeting yesterday as well. Uh, we also installed two associate directors, uh, uh, Amanda and Grant Applehands, our new associate directors. So we're excited for them. The big winners of the evening were uh, John and Ruth. Uh, John bid on an exclusive vacation, get this guys, to Haver, Montana. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so if, if any of you, you know, know what's what and have been to this tropical paradise before, uh, please let them know after the after worship. A <laughs> um, couple other things. Uh, FLCW is meeting tomorrow at 2. Uh, Cub Scouts uh, happening, as well as Children's Choir, 3F and 406. Uh, qu uh, quilters are meeting on Thursday. All right. Uh, Thursday at 1. Uh, also, we're going to have an altar guild, uh, not uh, tomorrow, but on Monday the 23rd, to set up for Reformation Sunday. So. Um, we don't typically meet on Mondays, so take note of that. And then uh, uh, newsletters. And then uh, Harvest Dinner, so uh, Sunday, October 29th, uh, two Sundays from now, is Reformation Sunday. And uh, following Reformation Sunday, uh, Reformation Worship, we're going to have our Harvest Dinner uh, potluck meal down in the Fellowship Hall. So plan ahead for that. Uh, we'd love to have you all for that. So uh, are there other announcements? Jeanette? I just got word this week that I was concerned and, and kept in contact with Shan Vinson. And Lights Under the Big Skies is going to be canceled for 2023 because they're digging up the sewer line and water lines at the fairgrounds. Oh, and yeah. so it'll be pretty muddy there. So we'll just plan on doing it for 2024. Uh, digging up sewer lines is it's not what I want to do for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you, Jeanette. No lights under the big sky this year, hopefully 2024. All right, uh, please take a moment and prepare your hearts for worship. I invite you to stand as we join together in our order for confession and forgiveness found on page one in your binders. We begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your heart through faith. Continue with uh, what a friend we have in Jesus on 54. <laughs>
and celebration.
arm and might, all honor and glory to Christ forever. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. printed on your Celebrate inserts in the bulletins. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and will the children please come forward for the children's sermon. So Otto is not feeling very well today. Actually, he's feeling okay, but he's coughing pretty bad, isn't he? And we didn't want to share that cough with everybody else. So. How are you guys doing? Leif and Elliot, good to see you guys again. You've been doing all right? Been doing the work? I don't know what work that is, but I assume you guys have been doing it, right? School work. School work, all right. <laughs> Well, today we're going to hear in a couple Bible passages about feasts. So, when I say feast, what does that mean? What does that mean? Great question. <laughs> Leif and or Elliot. <laughs> Who's Leif? Who's Elliot? Me. <laughs> <laughs> You're both Leif and Elliot. Okay, I got it. You're Elliot. All right. All right. You're Leif. All right. Okay. So, Leif. Uh, wants to know what is a feast. Freya, can you answer that for him? Is it like a picnic? Yeah, is it, uh, it's kind of like a picnic. That's a, that's a good I way to think of it. You love picnics. <laughs> awesome. Great, great, great. Um, oftentimes we use a feast for like a really big meal. So like we don't... Like food. Yeah, food. Absolutely. Good one, Elliot. You're, you're Elliot, right? Okay, sweet. Um, uh, so, uh, when we say feast, we probably don't mean just like a sandwich at lunchtime or cereal for breakfast. Feast, yeah, when everybody gets together, like a big dinner at Christmas or Thanksgiving. You're going to be five at Thanksgiving. Awesome. Very cool. Um, like a feast is like you go to a lunch store and have food there. At, at a lunch, you have food there, huh? Yeah. Yeah, kind of at a restaurant. Yes, absolutely, at a restaurant. So uh, we're going to give here a visions that uh, what God wants for all peoples everywhere in the whole world. Jesus makes this whole Yeah, Jesus does make this whole world. God everywhere in the whole wants everyone everywhere in the whole world to be gathered together for one big feast. Like you have a walking on water. Walking on water. Man, you guys are learning some great Bible stories. I love this. Um, so the same guy wants us all to be gathered for a big feast. And we're going to hear a little bit more about that, okay? That sounds good, right? Mm -hmm. You want Jesus to give you a big feast, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I know I do. Big chicken feast. Big chicken feast. All right, let's pray for that. 
Not too much food for you? Okay. <laughs> Dear God, let, let's pray, guys. Dear God, we give you thanks for visions of how we will all be gathered together on your holy mountain and how you will feed us with a big chicken and peas, but not too much food for Freya. And uh, despite our differences between all peoples throughout time and throughout the world, you have visions of how you will gather us all under your cross and in your name. And in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up. First lesson is found in Isaiah 25, 1 through 9. After a hymn of, pra hymn of praise acknowledging God as the shelter for the poor, the prophet portrays a wonderful victory banquet at which death, which, is, which in ancient Canaan was depicted as monsters swallowing up everyone, will be swallowed up forever. The prophet urges celebration of this victory of salvation. O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made a city, a, the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will <coughs> never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless like a, like a winter rainstorm, the noise of, noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of, ruthless are, of the ruthless are stilled. On the mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich foods filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. He will destroy on the, this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lord, this is your God. You have waited, excuse me, Lord, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom you have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Please read with me the Psalm 23 responsively. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is found in Philippians 4, verses 1 through 9. Through, though writing in, from prison and facing an uncertain future, Paul calls on the Philippians to rejoice and give thanks to God, no matter what the circumstances. God's peace is with us and binds together our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ, especially when things around us do not seem peaceful. The reading. 
My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Julia and, and urge Scythes to be in the same mind of the, in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement, who and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel for this week comes from Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those who invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Here ends our gospel lesson. Praise Praise Please be seated. <laughs> Grace and peace to you in the name of God, our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In preparation for this sermon, I threw out a question to my family. I asked, if you could throw a big feast for free, who would you invite? Family members made their list, beginning with mommy, and maybe, ah, Maybe daddy could come too. <laughs> Far away family members whom we do not see very much were given great priority. And our feast of pizza, candy nerds, and corn dogs was also extended to include anyone who wants to come. A response I'm pretty proud of. As for me, I think in addition to family and friends that I don't see very much, I would like to invite folks who are perpetually lonely and isolated. For all the ways that we have innovated communication, technology, and connection, I think a lot of us are overdue for a dinner invite and respectful, supportive company. Like I did with my family, I would like to ask you all 
If you were given the opportunity to throw a big feast for anyone you wanted to, who would you invite? Would you invite those closest to you, like your children and grandchildren, aunts and uncles, cousins, or other family members? Would you prioritize friends who make things interesting and have all sorts of stimulating conversation together? Would you invite the hungry based on their need to feast, even if they might prove uncomfortable dinner guests? Would you invite the homeless, the addicted, the abused, the neglected? Or, to put a different spin on it, would you invite those with whom you are too familiar? You know, those people who are close to you, but you just don't see eye to eye with. Would you welcome those with whom you have been feuding for years? Those who make you want to look away when you see them around town, just so you don't have to talk to them. Those whose opinions you find most disagreeable. Those who have been jerks to you or to other people for a long time. Or those you simply cannot stand. Perhaps they would be even harder to welcome to the table than the poor and the unwashed. After all, if you could stand to sit around the table with these kind of folks, you already would. But you can't stand them, so you don't. It is these latter sort of differences that make up the plot line for an interesting movie on the subject entitled The Babette's Feast. A Danish film Babette's Feast was released in 1987 and centers on a small pietistic community run by two aging sisters, Martine and Philippa. The sister's father was the pastor who had started the community nearly 50 years before we encounter them, when, at an age when the sisters were in their prime and most marriageable. However, their father turned away several suitors to keep them working for the mission of the community. Even a decorated Swedish military officer who was courting Martine, and a famous Parisian opera singer who was keen to share his life with Philippa. And the movie flashes back to who they had become, uh, from whom they had become in their old age, to who they had once been in their younger years. As the community had aged together, these, flash these flashbacks included more and more petty grievances that arose. And, in good Danish fashion, these petty grievances were never forgiven. I'm calling out my own here. The squabbles that had marred their past now scarred their futures. The community was full of love unrealized, conflicts unresolved, dreams deferred and hope diminished. In a quiet twist of fate, Babette emerged at the community's doorstep 14 years before we met them in the opening scene. Babette was a French refugee who had fled to Denmark after being part of a failed counter-revolutionary movement. She offered to work as a cook for the community. In their austerity and poverty, the sisters initially rejected her services because they had no money with which to pay her. Yet, desperately needing a place to land, Babette offered to cook for free if she could stay with them. They agreed, and she cooked and served the community for the next 14 years. Then, by another twist of fate, she won a lottery ticket back in France. She had possession of this single lottery ticket throughout her entire stay in Denmark, which her friend had paid to renew every year until she won 10,000 francs 14 years later. Surprisingly, she chose to spend the money on throwing an exquisite feast for the congregation of the Danish faithful who had never paid her for her work. Now, being religiously inclined to avoid worldly pleasures like fine food and wine, the community agreed to be served in this way, but secretly decided amongst themselves 
that they would not enjoy it, or admit to any delight in the elegant dishes that she would make. Scandinavian Lutherans, right? We can be a ridiculous bunch. As a side note, I am grateful for all who join our community from different religious and cultural heritages. You make us better. Well, despite their best efforts to avoid taking pleasure in the spread before them, the meal moved them in unexpected, even mystical ways. By sharing one well-prepared and one well-intended dinner, the congregation's commitments to the bland and the mundane fell away. What's more, by delighting in the meal that they shared, they were moved to forgive the unforgiven. Admit to loves that, that had long been denied. And they were drawn together in ways that they had not experienced in a very long time. Perhaps the meal made them even closer than they had ever been. As a chef, Babette was an artist. There was power in her work. There was power in the meal. Of course, Babette's feast serves as a sort of allegory for communion. We are bound together through the body and blood of our Lord, which is offered freely, but at a great price to the host. What's more, the Holy Supper moves on us in ways that are powerful and almost mystical. I mean, how do we really explain Christ being in, with, under, and all around the bread and the wine with body and blood? It sounds like hokum to many. Yet it sounds like salvation to those of us who believe. There is power in the meal. It accomplishes great things. We also hear in our scripture lessons for this week about the glorious feasting that is promised in the kingdom of God. Our gospel lesson is the parable of the wedding banquet in which the wealthy and the well-reputed are invited but refuse to come. So the invite is thrown out to everyone else. In our first lesson from Isaiah, we hear these prophetic words. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. The vision for peace and prosperity, reconciliation and reunion, ultimate goodness and grace that God gives us through the prophet is a vision of all nations feasting on a mountain together. Lord knows that this is a vision we need right now. With war dragging on in the Ukraine, chaos and conflict exploding in Gaza, and inexplicable infighting here in the United States. A heavenly feast on God's holy mountain where all people from all places can come together seems exactly like what we could use right now. God knows that we are more prone to deal with our problems by using walls and barriers than tables and chairs. So God promises to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Build a table long enough for all of us to feast together. This grand feast that God has planned will push us to blessings beyond imagining. I say push us because there will likely be great discomfort in the guest lists. Jews and Muslims, Republicans and Democrats, gay and straight people, Israelis and Palestinians, cowboys and Indians. All are offered a seat at the table on God's holy feast. Just as insidious, you might have to sit next to somebody you haven't been able to talk to for decades. 
Break bread with someone you would rather have thrown in prison. And reconcile with someone you find to be simply repugnant. If God's ways are higher than our ways, there's a <clears throat> between all our squabbles, all of our differences, all of our divides, all of our conflicts, all of our wars, there is a deep and abiding longing for peace and perpetuity. God promises this peace through a meal. There is power in the meal. May we rejoice in the invitation. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Continue with blessed be your name.
stand as we confess our Christian faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page four in your binders. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of We continue with our prayers of intercession, which are printed on the back of your celebrate inserts in your bulletins. <laughs> Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. For the Church of Jesus Christ in this and every land, that all followers of Christ share the mind of Christ and strive to live together in peace, staying firm in the Lord, God of grace. Hear our prayer. For green pastures and still waters, and all the beauty of the natural world, especially here in the Mission Valley and Flathead Lake and Mission Mountains, that creation flourishes and humankind lives in right relationship with you and with all you have made. God of grace. For the nations of the world and all who hold positions of authority, that they govern in accordance with God's vision of justice, providing shelter and refuge to all in need, striving toward the goal of peace and prosperity for all. God of grace. For all experiencing valleys of illness and grief, that they be healed and comforted and find rest in the presence of the Good Shepherd who walks beside them. God of grace. For this community of believers, that wherever there is conflict or discord, the love of Christ may keep us united and make us mindful of all that is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, and excellent. God of grace. Lord, we ask that you receive the prayers we offer now. Continue prayers for Robin Irwin, who is now home and will be in the care of hospice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, I ask that your presence be with Kirsten as our daughter as she waits to hear from the surgeon regarding surgery and I ask also that he be with her and when she meets with her lupus doctor in the near future to decide how what medication she's going to be able to take that she's been on for 30 years and she's been if the medication has been affecting her eyes. Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer.
Lord, we lift these prayers to you as well as the cries of our hearts, which are too deep for words. Lord, in your mercy. Hear and thanksgiving for the beloved saints who now rest in your mercy. Let their faithful witness guide your church until the day we join them at your heavenly feast. God of grace. Hear Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share signs of peace with one another and with those on the, on the live stream. Continue with our offertory. Continue with our communion liturgy. A few notes. Uh, offering box will stay on the altar if you want to leave your offering in person, and you can give in online as well. Uh, we welcome all to our table in the name of Jesus Christ, believing that Christ is truly present in body and blood, in bread and wine. We have both wine available and non alcoholic grape juice. Wine is the red liquid, and grape juice is the white. Uh, if you'd like to be served in your pews, please let the ushers know as they dismiss you. Also, we will be uh, using the contemporary version of the Lord's Prayer that you find in your binders. We continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, 
We praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Please be seated. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen you and keep you in his grace both now and forever.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen you and keep you with his grace both now and forever. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace both now and forever. Please kneel as you are here. The body of Christ given for you. 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 May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace both now and forever. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Now.
Please stand. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. song for this morning is As You Go On Your Way on 31. serve the Lord. And all God's people said,
sometimes. 